Hello, everyone. I apologize for being a little bit late today. We had a, an important vote that I had to, to meet downstairs. But thank you very much for joining us today. I am uh, State Senator Rosemary Bay. I represent the 12th Senate District, which is where that tragic shooting in Oxford occurred on November 30th of, this, of last year. It has been more than two months since that day, and sadly, more than eight months since we introduced the legislation on June 17th, last summer actually, in both the House and the Senate, that if we had acted on it, could have made a difference that day. Our secure firearm storage bills, that Senate bills 550 to 553, and House bills 5066 to 5069, are what we're here to talk about today. These bills would require guns to be stored safely to prevent injury and provide criminal penalties if failed to safely store that gun results in injury or death. Specifically, guns would be, have to be secured in a lockbox in a location a reasonable, a reasonable person would think was secure or securely locked with a locking device. We're all safer when guns are stored, unloaded, locked, and separated from ammunition. To speak on these proposed policy issues, we have several important speakers with us today. So first, I would like to introduce our Michigan Attorney General, Dana Nessel. A.G. Nessel has long advocated for common sense gun legislation, not just through her platform here in Michigan, but through several multi-state actions her department has signed onto under her leadership. Those actions have supported gun safety laws across the country. A.G. Nessel understands that safety measures do not infringe on a person's right to bear arms, but recognize the responsibility that comes with owning a firearm. We, we appreciate her support of this legislation and hope our partnership will lead to real change for Michiganders. With that, uh, Attorney General. Thank you. Thank you so much, Senator. Thank you for inviting me to be here. Thank you for everyone who is here today for this uh, incredibly important message that we're trying to convey to people all around our state. Uh, and thanks especially, of course, to Senator Bayer and to Representative Manoogian for organizing this opportunity. And thank you to John Gold uh, for being here today as well. Uh, and I'd, I'd especially like to thank Rena St. Juliana for her bravery and her courage in being here today. We had an opportunity to speak at my office as well as with several other um, kids that were there that fateful day in um, Oxford and parents and teachers and it was so informative for me. So um, first though, let me, let me say a few words about gun safety. It remains unconscionable that our gun laws do not include common sense safety measures. Thoughts and prayers ultimately fall very short. And we must act properly to address gun violence in our schools, which is why I wholeheartedly support safe storage legislation. We fail if our response, uh, we fail as leaders if our response to this tragedy in Oxford is just more of the status quo. And I will continue to work with our partners in the legislature to make sure we get this done for our kids, for our educators, and for all our communities. We absolutely need to prioritize our kids over our guns, and that requires us to pass laws that require safety measures that are followed when guns are around children. Simple as that. The bills currently in the legislature would require safe storage of a firearm where children are present. I mean, how hard is that? It's the right thing to do, and I'm committed to working with my legislative partners to see this delivered to the governor and signed into law. Uh, you know, I, I had a conversation just this morning with Wayne County Prosecutor Kim Worthy about this issue. She's really been on the forefront of safe storage laws for many years and trying to convince others uh, with the Prosecuting Attorneys Association to do the same. So I asked her if she would provide me with just a, a few statistics of what she's seeing just in Wayne County. Since 2019, she's had over 30 cases that involve uh, death or serious injury to children based on failure to properly secure, secure weapons. In 2021, 12 of those alone, just since this year, it's February 15th, just since this year, three cases. And these are all either deaths or serious 
harm that has come to children as a result of the failure to properly secure firearms. But these are not just statistics. They're not just numbers. These are children. And in many cases, these are dead children who didn't need to die when their deaths were entirely and easily preventable. And in the wake of the recent school tragedy in Oxford, we need legislation like this now more than ever. It will save lives and it could prevent a tragedy of this sort happening again. Of course, we also need to enforce laws that are currently on the books that punish those who post threats on social media or call in threats of violence at or near a school. In recent weeks, you've seen a marked increase in threats of violence that have been reported in schools around Michigan. And local law enforcement agencies have reported threats on social media that number in the hundreds in their own communities. When school administrators are forced to shut down schools, schools or students miss valuable days of instruction. And obviously this cannot continue. Whether they're pranks or real threats, they are real crimes. So I recently re uh, released a video that highlights the seriousness of making threats against schools. Uh, they are terrorist threats and they will be treated as such. Anyone making such threats can face felony charges and I will work with local law enforcement to prosecute these crimes to the fullest extent of the law. We know that serious consequences are effective deterrents to crime. And we cannot avoid our responsibilities as policymakers and elected leaders and just expect things to change. The safety of our children is an issue upon which we can all agree. And the time to advance this legislation is now. Thank you. Thank you so much, Attorney General. Uh, we really appreciate your help in raising the awareness. Um, and next up, we're going to invite uh, one of our uh, strongest partners in the House of Representatives. Also, I have the opportunity to work with her within our district. We share constituents. Uh, State Representative Mari Manukin. Thank you, Senator Bayer. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Mari Manugian. I'm the state representative for the 40th House District, which includes Birmingham, Bloomfield Hills, Bloomfield Township, and the eastern portion of West Bloomfield. Thank you all for coming here today to hear about this important set of bills and policies we believe will help avoid senseless, life-shattering tragedies like the one the world witnessed at Oxford High School this past November. Three years ago, when I came to the Michigan House of Representatives, I joined then uh, Representative Rebecca Warren in standing up for these common sense reforms regarding our firearm laws, like this safe storage uh, legislation. I have worked on this legislation for three years now, and my reasons for doing so have never been clearer than after the events of November 30th, 2021. Today, I'm reflecting on the words of my county's prosecutor, prosecuting attorney Karen McDonald, who after the tragedy at Oxford High School said, Michigan's laws are woefully inadequate. Well, we're all here today to tell you why we need to change that. Thank you to Attorney General Nessel and my legislative colleagues, including my partner in the House on this, Representative Felicia Brabeck, and our allies across the political and civil society spectrums for supporting this important change. 4.6 million children across America live in homes with unlocked or unsupervised firearms, with 75% of those children know exactly where those guns are kept. Not only that, but some 80% of shooters in school shootings under the age of 18 get that firearm from their home or from the homes of friends or relatives. We must pass legislation here in Michigan to require individuals who purchase those firearms to keep those firearms stored in a manner consistent with how deadly they can be. In June of 2021, we all, we all introduced House Bills 5066 through 5069 and Senate Bills 550 through 553, which would create such a requirement, ensuring that firearms purchased by Michiganders would have to be stored away safely or secured with a proper gun lock. These bills also create commensurate criminal penalties to hold folks accountable if their failure to properly store their firearm results in the injury or death of one of our neighbors. This legislation could have helped to prevent exactly the type of tragedy seen at Oxford High School. 
A safely stored firearm would never have made it into a child's hands. It would never have been uh, taken out of a home without either parent's knowledge. It could have never been used to tragically end the lives of four Michiganders, children whose parents and siblings didn't know that morning would be their last hug goodbye. The bills that Representative Brayback and I introduced in the House uh, and the same bills uh, that our counterparts in the Senate have introduced are common sense reforms that we can all get behind so that we never see another tragedy like what happened at Oxford High School, or at the very least, do everything we can to prevent a tragedy like the one that we saw at Oxford High School. They create avenues for law enforcement and prosecutors to hold irresponsible gun owners accountable, while allowing responsible gun owners the peace of mind that their firearms will never be used for nefarious purposes. Responsible gun owners and firearm safety advocates agree that committing to safe and secure firearm storage is the best way we can ensure lives are saved. Again, I thank you all for coming here this afternoon, in particular uh, the family members of the survivors of gun violence who are here joining us today. And I want to deliver this message to the survivors of gun violence who are listening, to those family members listening, or to those school children, teachers, school administrators, paraprofessionals, or others who are touched by gun violence who are turning in today. Your safety matters, and we will not rest until this legislation addresses this crisis. To my legislative colleagues on the other side of the aisle, we once again ask for these bills to be brought up in committee and for decent good faith discussions to take place to keep our schools safe, our houses of worship safe, and our communities safe from gun violence through requiring safe firearm storage. Thank you. Thank you so much, Representative Manugian. Uh, our next speaker is Jonathan Gold. He is the president of the Michigan chapter of Giffords Gun Owners for Safety and a Giffords Senior Ambassador. He's a firearm safety instructor who's been teaching people about firearms for more than 20 years. He's a proud Michigan resident who attended Mich University of Michigan Dearborn and Miami University of Ohio. Jack? Thank you. I've already been introduced, so I'm gonna skip that piece of this speech. With great power comes great responsibility. And there's no greater power than the power to take life at a distance. Uh, with that great power has to come great responsibility. I'm here today as a responsible gun owner, a supporter of the Second Amendment. I'm a concealed carry permit holder who respects the rights of citizens to defend themselves. Like the majority of responsible gun owners, I don't approve of firearms bans, nor do I approve of firearms negligence or armed intimidation. And I know that my Second Amendment rights and supporting practical gun safety measures are not mutually exclusive. They're necessary, prudent, and urgent. That's why I joined Giffords Gun Owners for Safety, a group of hunters, sport shooters, concealed carriers, and collectors a true voice for people who support responsible gun ownership and practical gun laws. The majority of gun owners are responsible, but we've lacked a responsible voice, and we are that voice. We proudly support the Second Amendment, but we also recognize that our country is in the midst of a gun violence crisis. As responsible gun owners, we need to be part of the solution. Each year, more than 1,000 Michiganders die from gunfire. And many of those deaths are preventable. We know that there are concrete steps we can take to reduce gun violence. I'm sad and angry today because I've had to change my speech three times because we've lost three more children since I wrote this. Last December, a two-year-old boy was left in critical condition after he shot himself with an unsecured gun found in an open duffel bag in his home. In January, the story repeated itself as a toddler was able to reach in between the seat of a car and its console and wounded his mother and brother sitting in the back seat of the car. It happened again as a CP Hall holder here in Michigan left her gun in her jacket pocket sitting on a coat hook for her two-year-old to find. Last Monday night, it happened again. These incidents are evidence of not tragic accident but clear and utter negligence. According to articles in the Detroit News, 20 children and teens' lives could have been saved by safe storage in the last 18 months in the state of Michigan. Last summer, when gun-carrying white supremacists stormed our state capitol, 
It shocked our nation and it shocked me. As a gun safety instructor of over two decades, I was outraged at the attempted armed intimidation of our lawmakers and their staff. The First Amendment protects free speech. The Second Amendment does not include the right to intimidate our fellow citizens, and it's time that responsible gun owners stand up and use their voice to protect the public safety of all our citizens. I'm here today because we understand that Michigan needs to do more to protect its children and families. Sadly, because of our state and nation's lax gun laws, children under 18 accounted for nearly one quarter of all unintentional gun deaths in 2020. That's a 38% increase in the rate of those deaths among young people the prior year. Enough is enough. Michiganders are dying, and it's time that everyone gets to work in this state to address gun violence. So I have an ask today. Please contact your legislators and tell them that we need to take action. We need stronger gun laws like background checks, child access protection laws, and especially safe storage laws, which my organization stands here committed to support. Thank you. Thank you so much, John. We always appreciate your insights. Our final speaker today is a very special guest. Uh, here today along with her father Steve and one of her colleagues from Oxford High School. Raina St. Juliana is a student at Oxford High School and the older sister to Hannah whose loss the family continues to grieve. Raina I just have to say you are one of the most courageous strongest women I have known and we really appreciate you coming in today to speak. So thank you for your strength. My name is Raina St. Juliana and I'm a junior at Oxford High School. I wanted to say thank you to Senator Baer for sponsoring such an important piece of legislation. A 15 year old was given access to a 9mm handgun as an early Christmas gift. Four days later that same gun was used to injure six students, a teacher, and kill four children. Justin Schilling, Madison Baldwin, Tate Muir, and my little sister, Hannah St. Juliana. Why does a 15-year-old have access to a weapon that can cause so much harm? The Oxford school shooting was not the first. In fact, horrifically, as many know, it's one of many tragic, needless incidents. So why are we not trying harder to stop it? The system that allowed the shooter access to the firearm is the same system that failed Justin, Madison, Hannah, and Tate. Because there's no reason, no excuse for all of them not to be here, to have their futures taken away. The safe storage bill was introduced last spring. It is a bill to keep unauthorized people away from firearms. This is a common sense bill that could have prevented the Oxford tragedy. I have difficulty understanding on why it had not been passed and implemented. It could have saved my sister. I could have spent my Christmas with Hana. I could have begun 2022 with my favorite person by my side. And we could have had our family dinners without an open missing seat at the dining table. The next step should not be training kids to barricade doors, hide in corners, and to live in fear. The next step must be to pass laws and create the change that will prevent this from ever happening ever again. Don't let another child lose their life this way. Thank you. Thank you. Right, I can't say how much we appreciate you and your family for being here today and all the families that had to endure this tragedy um, and the Oxford community overall. It has been incredibly difficult. We respect you all and thank you. Um, as I've said time and again, we as legislators have a responsibility to our constituents. We need to ensure safe and healthy communities. It does bind us all together, no matter where we come from and what our beliefs are. But I gotta say, I am pretty sick of the status quo here. I'm tired of thoughts and prayers. We have the privilege of being able to actually do something about this. 
in our work, we could change this. We could make a difference. We know, based on evidence from other states that have enacted bills exactly like this one, that numbers go down, that there is reduction in gun violence. There's a reduction in child shooting and in child injury with firearms when safe storage laws are in effect. So every day we don't do this is another day that we're not protecting our people. Another day when we're not doing our job, we're not caring for our children, we're not making our kids safer. We absolutely can do this and we can do it now. So I'm calling on my colleagues in the majority in the legislature to show some empathy for those who are suffering, who have suffered, who suffer, will suffer in the future from gun violence because we're not doing anything to stop this. I want to thank you all for coming here today, our speakers and the press, for all of you to be here today. This is so critical for us. Uh, now I'm going to turn it over to Rosie Jones, who is our press secretary, and will open up the questions. We're ready for questions. Who's first? John, you want to come up? Right? Eric in the back, go ahead. Uh, come up. I just want to add, with this uh, safe storage laws, from what we know in the Oxford case, it was given to him as a gift. He's 15 years old. If it was stored in a lock, but he had access to it or knew how to get in, would that change how this would have been handled, I guess? I mean, are, are minors allowed to have access or be able to figure out how a gun lock could be opened, or does it have to be? The purpose of the gun locks and those safe storage is to keep minors from having access to the guns. Uh, there is it is not allowed for a minor to own a firearm. They can't take a firearm out of their house and to school. The only time they can use a firearm is with their parent, uh, with their, their guardian. So if you say are hunting, you can go hunting with your mom. You can, you can, that's perfectly fine. It is not legal for them to have access to that gun and take it places and use it, period. Not legal, not allowed. That's the point of the safe storage is to keep it out of their hands what people do in their houses. That's the reason for the rest of the law. When you do allow a minor to have possession of the gun, you're gonna be held accountable if they use it to cause harm to themselves or others. That's, that's to make the laws stronger, as our Attorney General in Oakland County said. Woefully inadequate, the amount of what she has to work with to hold those parents accountable. One small piece of the bill, of the bills would, would force the sellers of firearms to have people sign a document that says we understand and that we will be held accountable to a felony if a minor gets possession of this gun and uses it to hurt themselves or others so there will be awareness at the time of purchase that you cannot give that gun and let your child or any other minor take it and use it so it's not just the physical locking up of the gun but restricting access do not let the minor correct the minor does correct take Correct. Senator, can I address the gun law? Yes. Thanks. So the, the gun lock shouldn't have been the 15-year-old's gun lock. The gun lock should have been the parent's gun lock who had the key or the combination to lock that weapon up so that the child could only use it supervised. Letting any minor run around with a 9-millimeter pistol is not prudent nor practical. So if you're right if they the child that had the combination of the gun lock they simply could have taken off the gun lock but had the parents implemented that gun lock and restricted access to that firearm it would have been a lot harder for them to get use of that weapon that's why the parents need to be held accountable that's right um, is there any effort to um, help owners with getting a safe getting the necessary equipment to lock up their sure. So uh, I represent uh, Bloomfield Township, for example. Many police departments across the state of Michigan provide gun locks uh, free of charge to folks who come in and request one. Um, there's been a significant increase, uh, at least in our district, anecdotally from what we've heard from police departments following the Oxford shooting of folks requesting locks to lock their firearms up. Um, so right now, uh, there really is, with or without this legislation, there really is no excuse for not storing your firearms safely. That is, you know, that's what we've heard here today from, from folks who do own firearms, who support the legislation. 
it is easy to get a lock to store your firearm safely. Uh, but what this legislation does is it holds folks accountable who do not do that. In terms of holding people accountable, that component, would it apply to adults as well if an adult were to access a firearm? Would those charges still apply and that kind of thing? This particular law is about minors. How many states have a safe storage law? 17? John, do you know? Where do you go? Do you know how many states? I don't. No, I don't know. We can get you the numbers. Any other questions? Okay, Thank you. Seeing none, we'll do one-on-ones. Was there one more? Okay, uh, we will open it up for one-on-ones. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.